Hello and welcome back to Space Engine Days. In today's video, we're looking at another small fighter, but this one is very unique because it uses a script I've never seen before, and that allows a pleb like me to actually hit the target without wasting a bunch of shots. Yes, this thing I'm currently standing on is called the SFX Eden Experimental Tactical Starfighter, which is this lovely thing over here. So this features auto cannons to blast your enemies with. We've got a railgun just below where I'm standing. It's got a bunch of cameras there, which I'm not too sure why there's a bunch of cameras, but I presume it's there either for the script or for decoration. And we do have a very sleek overall look. But yes, to demonstrate the script, because it is such an odd thing, I'm just going to grab hold my character right now, hop into the cockpit, which is hidden away down here. First person view, coming into the camera, here we go. You now see they've got an enemy version of the ship sitting right in front of me. Now, when I was the press number four, what's going to happen is we're going to get this big purple square. Now, it doesn't really look like too much is happening. It's just an aiming reticle, much like that red ring around the ship by default. If I was to say press number six, what's going to happen is we're then going to get an aim assist. As you can see, my camera slightly snapped. We have to say turn that off again, move over to here, turn it on. I'm now going to just snap straight towards the target. So my guns are always pointing exactly where I need to shoot. But it gets even better. If I was to hit that one more time, we then get auto aim, which firmly locks yourself to the target to the point that I can no longer move the mouse around. And if I was to say, come out of the camera, third person view and start to drive the ship around, you can see that without me touching the mouse, or you can't see me actually touching the mouse, it is just automatically keeping itself pinned to the enemy ship. So if I was to fire the guns, I'm always going to hit it. And of course, there's the railgun right there. So yes, that is the script. It's bloody fantastic if you can't aim like me. I suppose what I'll do now is just turn that all off in the moment, come back into this, bring it back over to the ship, then press F10, find it in spawn menu, and it go from there. So the experimental tactical starfighter is 587 small blocks, and there's a small block just flying past the screen. Anyway, yes, this thing has got a nice lot of information about it, such as its specifications, what it uses, and the script, which is right down the bottom called the Ash FCS. So we're going to give this a thumbs up. Move around towards the very front. We'll have a good look around the outside. They're going to drive around for a bit. Maybe test out that script a bit more. If some space pirates decide to spawn, we'll slam it into an asteroid. So, and the very front with a ship. What we got is a camera sitting behind a window block to help precisely aim your guns and to allow that script to fully function. Surrounding all of that, we've got some very shiny steel blocks. Just give it a bit of decoration at the front there. Then if we were to move around onto the side here, we'll see even more of our lovely shiny sci-fi skin blocks. They'll eventually come across to a battery to give it a bit of power. Right below there, we can see our rail gun that we just fired a second ago. Then on the side there, two on both sides, got all the cannons for some more rapid fire shooting. We can also see between that and the battery a hydron thruster, which is one of two types of thrusters that appear on this ship. We've got both iron and hydrogen, but we cannot go on a planet. This is purely for space. If we move over to this section, this is a bunch of cameras. Like I said at the very start, I'm not too sure why these are here. I thought they could be originally for this script. But after removing them, it didn't seem to have any effect on the script itself, so I think they're just there for decoration. Anyway, over there we can see the sign of our hydrogen tank. Then moving across onto the wing, we've got some lovely red blocks that slowly degrade in colour, so they come across to a more blacky part on the very edge. Moving around to the very side of the scene, we've then got some more lovely red blocks that slowly get darker as it goes towards the back. And around over to this section, behind our wings, nothing too much to talk about. If we were to come around towards the very back of this thing, turning my lights off once again, we didn't see the glow of our lovely ion thrusters to push us around while in space. Then above and below there, we see some fantastic use of our rotor heads, acting as a bit of decoration. Putting my light on once again and moving all the way up so we can get a clear view of what's going on there. It's just rotor heads sitting on a column, sitting on a blaster edge block. And like I said, it's just there for some decoration. Moving along in the middle, we can see some more hydrogen tanks where we can clearly see the green lights on there to see how full it is. There's a couple more hydrogen thrusters. There's our cameras to sit on top of more cameras at the very front, and there's a little gap for us to access our cockpit to drive this thing around. We simply peer through here, activate our cockpit, and then we're all ready to go. But on the inside here, we can see a couple of reactors to help out power this thing. And moving all the way back up, moving towards the front there, there's some lovely piston heads sitting on top of our auto cannons. There's another battery at the very front. And over to this section, there's our camera and window to actually see where we're going and to use that script. Moving all the way down on this thing, there is a very clear view of our railgun, now how it's been housed into the main body of this ship. And as we have to move along, there's an O2HU generator, more hydrogen thrusters, there's the bottom of our hydrogen tanks on our wings. And towards the back there, some more rotor heads on columns, on blaster edge blocks, 
with a sneaky cargo dinner sitting in the very middle. Coming towards the very back there. There we go. And there we are. That's a brief look around the outside of the experimental tactical starfighter. That looks bloody fantastic with how it's all being set up. It's a very odd design using those cameras like it is. It's the first time I've ever encountered a ship using it. It does work very well for just a bit of extra decoration. It's a bit more on the PCU limit, say, compared to using armored panels and all that. But it certainly works at the end of the day. And I absolutely love the color gradient of how it changes from a blacky gray all the way to a red towards the front. But anyway, grabbing hold of my character, bringing up the HUD, these are the controls we get. And yet, in first person view, as you can see here, we will need to use that camera if you get shot out, kind of a sitting duck, unless you do have third person mode turned on. Yeah, for the controls, number one is coming for your auto cannons to fire them all together. Number two is for your railgun below that camera. Pressing number three is to access that camera so we can get a good view of what's going on. And of course, we use our script, which is four, five, and six. So we press four to activate it. Five is to turn it on and off. And number six is to change it from auto or to aim assist. Turn it back off over to tab number two coming out of that camera. Number one is for your magnetic plates to turn them on and off. Number two and number three is for your batteries to auto or recharge. Number four is for your hydrogen tanks to stop power on and off. Number five is for your hydrogen thrusters all the way around the ship to turn them on and off. Number six is for your ion thrusters all the way around the ship to turn them on and off. And then number seven is for your reactors to turn them on and off, just in case you don't need them or if you're not planning to use the railgun anytime soon. Over to number three and four, we've got nothing else, so it's time to drive this thing around. So moving forwards, this is what we get. We've got some nice speed at the end of the day. It's not the fastest ship in the world for this size of the ship. There's certainly been fast on the workshop, but considering the guns it has and considering how precise this thing is gonna be in combat, it doesn't really need to be scooting around. You could be pinned to your target, pummeling them with those order cannons, those rail guns, and it should serve very well at the end of the day. But slowing down, as you can see, we are very slow compared to moving forwards to the point we will want to do 180 to slow ourselves down a lot quicker. And in fact, if we do have a spare primal block on this, or if you can find a place to place one onto this, I'd recommend having the auto 180 script so you can just press that and it'll automatically stop yourself instead of having to do it manually. Moving left. And moving right, we are exceptionally slow at that. Look at that. That's something that I would expect from a heavy battleship. But again, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be primarily using our thrusters at the back there to boost around and of course change our direction by doing that. But because of how much speed we've got behind us, it doesn't really matter if we can't do the left or right. It's only really going to be there for docking up so you don't just slam the stuff by accident. Moving up feels a little faster than moving forwards. Down feels a bit slower than moving forwards. You might be able to get away with flying this on the moon. I have not tested that out myself. So there's the moon in the distance, scooting all the way across. And we'll come over to here and get a bit closer to the ground. Drop them all the way down like this. And we should be able to fly around. Yes, we can. So there we are. We can fly on the moon, but we won't be able to fly on the planet because it will be a bit hard. And just to demonstrate it, we'll come over to the Earth-like planet. All the way over to here, come into this section, drop myself down a bit, go like this, and tilt myself all the way up. And there we are. As you can see, we will slowly come down to the ground. Not too much you can actually do about that at the end of the day, but we can still sort of fly this thing around at this height. The iron thrusters got a little bit of speed behind them, but you won't be able to get back into space if you get too low, because we are just continuously falling. Anyway, coming back all the way into space, there we are, and bring up the signals. Is there any kind of space pirates around here? I don't think there is. So the one final thing to do with this is of course slam it into an asteroid, and I think that'll be that. Or better yet, what we're gonna do is slam it into the planet, because that should be a bit more destructive. In fact, I found one better. Beans were on the planet, and we are slowly coming down to the ground. I found the district headquarters for these space pirates, where now we're going to activate this. We're gonna put it onto aim assist. So as we were to get a bit closer, hopefully we'll lock onto it. If we get there in time before we hit the ground, then we're simply going to pummel it with our guns and hopefully deal a nice bit of damage. I'm just gonna shoot the railgun in there just to gauge the range. And there we are. Oh, we're now locked on. Pressing number six again, now firmly locked onto that. Activating the auto cannons, third person view. We now scoot around here. We're not gonna be able to do much. Not gonna be able to turn as fast as I want to. But it'll certainly work at the end day for just shooting the core of the building. If we get closer, we're going to get shot back from the cannon guns to the rocket launchers. Here they all come. This is going to be the end of this poor little ship. And, well, we're going to be coming down the ground a lot faster now. But look at those shots coming towards us. We're doing a fantastic job of dodging it as we fall. And there we are. We're now just a sitting duck. And any time now, the rocket launchers are just going to pummel straight into us. Unless, of course, we are out of their firing range. Yes, that's pretty much it for the SFX Eden Experimental Tactical Starfighter. It's a lovely little ship with a fantastic design. It's got a fantastic script on there to help you aim your guns. 
There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with yourself. Highly recommend you do. And I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.